Hey, this well, is the last well, week's well, Living Hotel. While he's okay, well, AFK, um, those that are still around, start off, why are you in a hotel? Uh, my company sent me out of town to go rescue another division because they, they suck. Fair enough. That's a good reason to be out of a hotel. Uh, that's what's that's cool. What do you do for work? I build satellites. That's a pretty dope dot job. Not gonna lie. At least you're out and about. I sit at the desk all day for my job. Yeah, it's not as glamorous as it is because I have to I have to work in a clean room, so you gotta garb up and everything. Oh yeah, that doesn't sound all that great. Now I'm trying to put voices. I'm I've been terrible about it so far. I'm trying to put voices to characters. Which one are you? Kenichi. Kenichi, okay. The druid, right? Yes. What is it a druid fighter? Yep. And you you he said you had a domain, right? Yeah, I took the time domain. I didn't know that druid I didn't know druids got domains in his uh in this in his uh by the way he runs it. Yeah, there's a lot of house rules for John. It took me quite a while to fully get the niche of his. Interesting. Um, I'm not going to say it's bad or good yet. I haven't played long enough to know, but it's it definitely is interesting. And I like some of it because it seems like what the point is to try to even out the game a little bit because in base, you always run into the issue of some classes being way stronger than others. Yeah, for me, it's like John's game is like a 3.7 because it takes pieces of 5, 4, 3, 2, and he takes like the best parts and he kind of works it together. Yeah, and it seems like he does some testing with it too. So if he ends up not liking it, he'll remove it. So it's interesting. How long have you been playing with him for? Two years. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to get my animal companion. I, it's I'm getting a blood hawk. I don't know what that is, honestly. I've played a lot of druid and never looked into the blood hawk as a choice. It's not a normal choice. I assumed it wouldn't be. <laughs> druid is my favorite class typically, but I've been playing fighters a lot lately to try to mix it up. Um, I don't. Uh, Druids are the best in this game. Druids seem like the best in 3.5 in general, if I remember correctly. They're considered well, one of the best. Druids and clerics. Yeah. Anything divine is awesome. Okay. Even paladins are really nasty. So far, um, I'm interested in playing Barda like this because I actually have never played that chaotic neutral style. and I, I'm trying to aim for a, uh, a middle point where he's not like that the Joker chaotic, but he's very battle hungry. Is his chaos? It's just that he loves fighting. The way that he owns his that chaos, chaotic nature, and I'm not sure how that's going to end up going. By the way, I'm not trying to take the centerpiece the whole time. So if you guys like, feel free to to take a, a bigger um, piece of the talking during the. Some of the more role play moments. Oh, no, you're fine. Says the guy who just talked the party out of a TPK. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't make me roll deception on that, and I'm really happy you didn't. Because that well, was the plan from the start. <laughs> I I took your claim at face value, so I figured if I'm taking it at face value, he would too. I was really surprised. I was like, oh, this is going to suck if he gives away thousands of gold pieces where the magic comes. I, my whole thought process, I was sitting here like, wow, the DM's really going to take my magic items right off the bat, right after giving them to me. I'm like, I'm not letting that happen. <laughs> it's like, I'm not letting this this go to waste. We just got a lot of nice equipment. Yeah, but it's not as much slap in his face as my uh, monk took the other day. <laughs> what happened there? I'm a vow of poverty monk, so I can't have any equipment, and we find an amulet of mighty fist plus five. <laughs> that was like two months oh, ago. Oh, that is a huge slap in the face. <laughs> why would you play, out of curiosity, why would you choose to play vow of poverty, though? 
That's one of the weaknesses I've always heard about poverty is that in the late game they they fall off really hard because of they they can't get the magical items. Yes and no. And John did uh, tweak a lot of the uh, exalted feats to kind of make them more worthwhile, not just kind of lame. Fair enough. And he has no magic items, and he's still the toughest guy in the party, by far. I, I'm, I, so one thing I've noticed about the way that you do your rules is it is very punishing in the early game if you have no decks. and well, Because if you have no decks... You can't, and you can't afford good armor. You're kind of SOL. <laughs> but it's like, but once you start getting better armor, it's great because then you have AC and uh, uh, damage resistance. But when you're in the, sitting in the middle there, where you got horrible AC and da damage resist, you're still taking a ton of damage. But just remember, as we go up, the enemy goes up. Yep. Yeah. By the way, like, I'm back. Anybody who casts spells is going to pull away from the people who don't have spells very quickly. Like, my my druid plays with a character very much like the character that I'm about to build, and his warrior can stand there and parry seven attacks around, barely, rarely ever gets hit, and my druid flies around as a dragon and firestorms everything. Right? Like, he's got an amazing character, but I'm a dragon that firestorms everything. So long and short of it is, get spells. Do we have? Says everyone? the fighter rogue. Yep, yeah, everyone's back. All right, we can continue then. I will just note for the record that that encounter was a screw up on my part. Um. I planned that encounter with the misconception that you would be second level at this point, and I made the rogues all second level. So if that was a ridiculously powerful encounter for your level, like that was four CR twos versus a party of four CR ones. I could be second level right now. You, you guys, as soon as you rest, you'll be second level, but. The idea was that the bandits weren't supposed to be that tough, but I just had it in my head. I'd already started working on the second level stuff, and I went, oh yeah, I, I got to put those bandits in. And I just grabbed second level rogues instead of first level rogues and didn't even think about it. <laughs> I saw so we came out on top, so maybe we're level three now? Well, you get a lot of XP, but... Uh, it's it, not it was a joke. Go... I, didn't, I yeah. didn't mean we'd actually be at level three. I have a really bad sense of humor as a warning. I like I'm not funny at all, but I try to pretend that I am and I tell a bad joke. Yeah, you sound like Kenny. I thought that wasn't the guy that mocked today. You thought you weren't gonna get mocked? So No, you you said that there's somebody new to mock and it wouldn't be me. You what lied. did the female do? The female bandit. Uh, she surrendered. So, uh, you guys... So she's dead. Oh, you just kill her? Oh, yeah. Oh, anybody that's... Any of the bandits that didn't flee are dead because of what they just tried to do. I mean, if, they, if this, somebody wants to stop me for it from doing so. Not a big fan of bandits. Well, the it looks like somebody... Dead bandits are good bandits. Yeah, because, I mean, the last thing we want them to do is to go back to their leader and then have issues with a, a bigger group. We already let one go. We don't want to let the other three go. Well, somebody murdered the bandit in the south, didn't they? Because he surrendered too. Oh yeah, I killed him. The bleeding no. out one would have gotten stabbed the moment the girl surrendered. I would have just turned and stabbed him at the moment she surrendered. But then but for her, she's not leaving either. I made a threat, and I followed through on that threat. This is what happens when Joe plays a uh, monk that, that is exalted and has to be good all the time. So he Benjamin goes the opposite direction with it. It's really hard to be a good monk in a party full of murder hobos. Yeah. Yeah. 
says the murder hobo. Says the murder hobo. I'm talking about the other party. You're always a murder hobo. Your your player preferences are literally what I use as an example to other players that the party's filled with murder hobos. The funny thing is, this is going to be clearly a very chaotic neutral game, and Paul's not here, and this is the game of his dreams. No kidding. Does he have, like, work or something? No, just during the uh, the lockdown, um, his girlfriend can't really go anywhere, so he can't hog the internet. Ah, uh, okay. But he made a cleric of Tempest, wanted to play this, like, cleave, power attack, killing machine character. And then Kenny made a exalted character to play beside him. And he's like, fuck. It's always interesting when you got a mixed party like that, though. Yeah, I agree. Loot the body. Loot the okay. Um, you've got three bodies. So you have, and the one rapier dropped on the ground. So you have uh, three masterwork studded leather, uh, four masterwork rapiers, and three short bows. Actually, I think you'd have all four short, bow, short bows because I think they drop their bows when they move forward. Uh, once we get all their loot off of them, I'm going to drag them all into a pile and set the pile on fire. There's no reason to leave the bodies just sitting out there in the middle of the road. I do a controlled fire, though, so I don't want it to, like, burn up the whole place. I just don't feel like we want to leave bodies sitting in the middle of the road for no reason. So is it some sort of overly chaotic evil thing? I'm just trying to dispose of the bodies. No, that's fair. You're not putting their heads on spikes. Yeah, that's not the plan. It's just the point is just to dispose of the bodies. But we could put their heads on spikes. I don't think anyone in our group is the heads on spikes type of person, though. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Neither would I. Did, did I mention that Joe is a murder hobo? Joe follows an exalted god as a murder hobo. Okay, so you guys travel back to uh, Ridgevale. After we loot the bodies. After you loot the bodies. I already gave you the loot. I don't know what you're waiting for. Oh, where's the loot? I've I... already written it down in, in the party loot. Our master loot tracker has already done that. I'm really glad that you, you take notes of that. Usually I don't take notes because my notes don't make sense to me afterwards. How how much, or what is the penalty for wielding two rapiers with only ambidex and an 18 dexterity or a 19 dexterity? I think it's two and two. So not worth it. If well, wield, it depends. One rapier and one short sword, would it be less? Or would it yeah, it's only the offhand weapon that counts. Before we go too far, as far as note taking goes, I went. I didn't do it. Uh, note on that inscription, just so I can write that down now. Oh, I can give you the inscription. Which which inscription do you want? The one on the shield. Oh, it just says "guard me." It's just the command word. And what was the language? It is in Old Archipelagon. Yeah, you mentioned your blood hawk. Do you have that ready? Yes. Um, I'm going to take one of those rapiers and then I'll put a short sword back in the pile. Uh, I'll take the bastard sword and put the my normal bastard sword sword in the pile.
Okay, I guess one of the things we should uh, discuss is how we want to do uh, tracking treasure and dividing treasure. Um, as a general rule, um, the way I do it is you take turns picking items because treasure is exponential. So the guy who picks the plus one sword gets the plus one sword, but by the time his turn comes up again, you're on to plus two swords and so on. So uh, it generally works out uh, fairly even that way. Or you can do it uh, based on cash value. You guys can decide. I don't actually care how you divide up uh, treasure. I just want to come up with a system that is fast and easy for everyone to follow along. I think the important part would just be don't be greedy. As long as we can keep that, I don't think we need to set something yet. But should greed start to show in anybody, and that includes myself. Uh, Mr. I got the part. expensive sword and shield? Well, uh, I sword. offered it. I said if anybody doesn't mind, I'm going to take these. Sword, shield, armor. I, I stated if anybody is if anybody has a problem with me taking these. I'm pretty sure ahead. you said I take the armor and put it on. You, you well, know, the armor I just took, the you, sword you know, shield I offered up. In, unless somebody else wants to use it, and I'll, I'll just take the bastard sword and the shield that nobody else could use. Right? No, 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 no. The way that the armor went is, I said I'll take the armor, and then we got to the the sword and shield. I said if everybody's if you guys are okay with it, I'll take those as well. And that's basically my point is, is when true. when you have something that is obviously only useful for one person, like nobody in the party can use the bastard sword except you. So it technically you could sell it and split the money, but that would be lame. Right. And if we come into something that's obviously for them or is of no value to me, then they can just take it because I'm not going to care too much about gold by the end uh, anyways. Like my, I'm not too worried about my character becoming rich. By the way, what are these ten feathers and ten vials of arrowhawk blood for? Oh, uh, apparently they're from the old uh, treasure list. The last one, yeah. I thought I cleared the treasure list. No, you had not. <laughs> we'll keep those feathers. No, I... Why? I know where we can get them. I mean, they're worth a hundred feathers. Gold. It's actually bloodhawk, isn't it? All right. Can everyone look at the loot thing and tell me if I missed anything? I'm seeing everything that we had seen on so far. I think we might have some more potions, though. Um, maybe not. I could we be wrong. We definitely have that. more potions than that. There was the oh, is that the four potions? The one that was in the box? Yeah, the four potions that I couldn't okay. identify. You've got three rapiers and one short bow now, or short sword. So everyone took a short bow? No. So three rapiers and four short bows? You have three rapiers and one short sword. Oh, one short sword. Okay. Yeah, Kenny threw his short sword in when he took one of the rapiers. Does anyone remember the other potions that we already identified? I'll put the bastard. I'll put the bastard sword back into the the main loot. I don't think I'm going to do the dual wielding that I originally planned before we added the gestalt leveling. So I'll just <clears throat> maintain the way that I'm doing with sword and board, and then sometimes switching to two handing. So you're keeping the exceptional bastard sword then. I'm putting the exceptional one back in to the loot, and then I'll just keep the magic one that I got. The exceptional greatsword or your regular bastard sword? Uh, which one was the magic one? The magic one is the magic one. There's a magic bastard sword. Bastard sword. Yeah, that's the one I'm taking. There's I'll a mundane the bastard sword, and then there's an exceptional greatsword that the statue had. Along with the cloak. My bad, I thought that said bastard sword earlier, and I wrote bastard when I re updated. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just keeping the magic bastard sword, and then I'll put my old bastard sword into the loot pile, and the great sword can stay in the loot pile as well.
Okay, um, the exceptional greatsword is worth 1,500 gold pieces. Uh, brand new. You probably only get uh, maybe 600 for it because it's in pretty rough shape. Try, uh, if anyone's got the ability to craft them, we could try repairing it before or firsthand or at least make it look fancy, make it look like it was repaired. Yeah, you could definitely get it cleaned up. You'd probably uh, get a better price for it. If anyone's got uh, weaponsmithing as a skill, you could uh, clean it up. Nope, I'm not right playing now. my artificer. I think I only have armor right now. I don't think I have the weapons. I only have armor. Right now. I plan to put some points in the weapon, weapon later for similar situations to this, but I don't have it right now. Okay. So just note the uh, the great sword is being six hundred gold pieces. There, I don't know if the uh, exceptional tables in the documents channel it probably is, but everything else is going to be masterwork or right out of the book. So uh, when you decide what items you're going to sell, you sell them for half of their uh, retail price, and that becomes coin when you get to town, which is where you are now. So, uh, Renil is uh, ecstatic to see his daughter. Um, he does not even make mention of the uh, lockbox that has his 100, 100 silver pieces in it. You guys didn't do any negotiating with him, so I never brought it up. Yeah, good point. But you guys ended up taking it anyway, and finders keepers, he's not complaining. And then you can decide from here what you want to do with uh, the loot you have left, and uh, we can uh, level up. We have uh, three magic items to identify, which is probably going to eat up most of the money that we're going to make. I'm pretty sure you don't have much in mo money at all. We had the exceptional we have a hundred sword. Yeah, I guess if you sell the greatsword, you could uh, you could make some money to do identifies. That's what I would suggest at this point, even yeah. though technically I could use a greatsword, but I'm more geared for range than I am melee. With a 12 strength, you can't wield a greatsword. You need a 14. Is it 14? Okay. Yeah. You need a 14 for a greatsword. I think you need a 15 or a 16 for a bastard sword one-handed. Yeah, big swords, yeah. I, mean, okay. I could imagine that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I haven't looked at the calculations in a while, but I used to have a table that had minimum strength for each weapon so that you knew what weapon you could wield if you did take an 8 strength. An eight in strength, I imagine that you could maybe wield a dagger. Well, an eight strength is still pretty strong overall. Like you could still wield a decent uh, weapon, but wielding something like a longsword, that's a fairly heavy weapon to wield one-handed. With an eight strength, you can wield it two-handed. I don't know about that. If you look at um, the calculations in the the DMG, the it, just based off carrying capacity and lifting up off the ground, it's a, even a ten is only like. 240 pounds off the ground, and that's considered supposed to be considered average. That's pretty low, so you go down to 8. Your strength, you must not be able to lift very much off the ground. No, that's fair. It's been off. I did the calculations. I could be off. Yeah, like I said, I, I figured it out years ago, and I it hasn't really been an issue, um, so I've never really bothered to track it. Most people who want to fight with a big heavy weapon want to do that because they have a high strength so that they can do tons of damage. Yeah, makes sense. Um, does anyone want the uh, armor weave cloak? Well, you need Absolutely. to get it identified first. Whatever it is. You don't have to. You could just put it on and figure it out, but nope. it can be bad. It shocks somebody. I'm not touching it until somebody tells me what it is. Okay, um, so to get... 
identify co cast will cost you 30 gold pieces and that's the bare minimum and it's 100 gold pieces for the uh, the material component um, you're most likely going to be paying 150 because you're not likely to find a mage that'll do it for 30 so uh, if you sell your sword for 600 you can get four items identified how many do you have Is it only three? I think so. Unless we're going to identify the potions. Um, potions can be identified without casting the spell, so you can also pay for that. When you and go that'd to... be 30 gold by itself without the components. It's not component, right? Uh, no, because a, uh, a wizard, a reasonable level wizard, can identify them just by casting Detect Magic. So he'll just charge you 10 gold pieces a pop for the, the potions. So if you can't identify them yourself, um, you guys can all roll again at second level to try. And whichever ones are left over, you can pay the 10 gold pieces to get identified. How many potions do you have left? You have the six from the, the ritual room. Do you have any others? I thought two of the ones from the ritual room went to me and Barda. And then we had the four that were in the floor. I don't, are you talking about the potions? What I'm yeah. talking about is potions you haven't identified. Whether you have it uh, or not isn't relevant if you don't know what I, it is. I think that's just the four that we had in the, uh, that we got out of the loot, uh, loot crate. But the uh, hobgoblin also had two potions. Oh yeah, I handed those out. I, I guess that, that, remind, that nobody did drink them, so we might have six then. Yeah, you should have six potions that are not identified. So, has everyone uh, leveled up their character? Uh, I have. Is it roll for health? Or... At second level, it generally makes most sense to roll for hit points unless you're rolling a really low die. You get one re-roll per character. So you roll at second level. If you roll crappy, you can re-roll it. Um, and you can take average if you want. Average is half the die plus one. Fighter is D10 or D12? Fighter is D12, so everyone gets a D12. Wait, fighter is a D12? Yes. Okay. That's why you what have 14 the, hit points. What was the average? Six? The average, the average is seven. But you can use your reroll if you want to roll higher. I guess, yeah, might as well, right? Can't roll any lower than that. Well, you can't. Yeah, no, can. the average is seven, not the minimum. The minimum's four. Oh. Oh, okay. I don't know, maybe I should wait on that reroll. Then. Okay, you can wait on it, that's fine. Joe with an 11 at second level. I think that's the first time I've actually rolled well. I was going to say, I thought you'd take average just because. I'll take average. Well, you have to choose to take average before you roll. So if you want to use your reroll on your one, you can. Uh, Alright, I'll go ahead and re-roll. There you go. That's better. So just note on your character that you've already used your re-roll. How much longer do you guys want to play for? Uh, 
know my answer. That's true. I assume Joe's answer is the same. My answer is the same. So it all comes down to Georgina. How late do you want to play? Um, I would say now is a good time to call it, personally. Okay, that's uh, fine. Just because I don't want to piss off the wife with, you know, too much expenditure. No, that's totally fair. I didn't. I wasn't trying to pressure anyone into playing. I just you know it's Saturday, so everyone uh, is hyped to play as long as we can. Yeah. It actually works out good if we stop here because I can add the new guy next time um, without having to go off into the wilderness and be a prisoner and all that kind of crap. We have another new person joining? Yeah, I had a guy contact me on Friday afternoon. I was like, good God, your timing couldn't be any worse. I got a game Friday night and I got a prep Saturday morning. I have no time to add you. But uh, we went through all the details and whatnot. He's trying to nail down what he wants to play. He's looking at uh, possibly playing a ranger. So uh, once I get his uh, character set up, uh, I can introduce him. So I guess the uh, next question is, when uh, do we play next? I'm available. I think the big question, unless someone else has a uh, conflict, is uh, for Joe, because we're playing the Plane Escape game next weekend. So are you able to play the weekend after that? Three weeks in a row, your mommy going to let you do that? The weekend of the 13th, I'll be in a hotel Saturday night. Oh, nice. Okay, is everyone good for the 13th, then? Yeah, sure. Pretty sure I'll be good that weekend. Okay. Um, well, then we can uh, round off our time uh, dealing with level ups, if you guys have any uh, questions. And uh, then we'll pick it up on the 13th. Anybody? Just... Sorry, go ahead. All I got to do is up my uh, fortitude and will save and take a feat. And your skills? Yeah. I might need help figuring out the skills. Uh, no problem. We can sit down and go over your character. Uh, now that you've played and you understand all of the mechanics, because I use a lot of house rules, I like to get players in and playing and that's why I level up right away so we can retool your character for anything if you decide oh shit I took this stupid feed and I'm not using it uh, like power throw or whatever right hey, is that an attack on me? that was a personal attack directed at you I tried to use it a couple of times. I just kept getting in put into melee. <laughs> um, I I didn't want to because I had so little time uh, left to prep, and I didn't have time to redo your character three more times. I didn't bring it up, but I already allow strength to hit with uh, thrown weapons, so the feat that literally does nothing. Well, but I still need it as a prereq for if I want to take power attack throw. Yeah, but why would you take power attack throw? Just get a longbow. <laughs> like, seriously. You you can I, you can throw something I thirty. I planned on replacing it because it ended up being useless. You can throw something thirty feet, or you can stand back across the battlefield and rain terror with a longbow. I didn't know what other feet to take. Uh, cleave. I have cleave now. Uh, focus, bastard sword. Uh, That's what I'm taking instead of power throwing. <laughs> specialization, improved initiative, two-hander style, shield style. I, I can just open up the document and go down all the fighter feeds if you want. I went and I went ahead with improved power initiative attack and it seems initiative is really important. Yeah, he just took uh, cleave at second level. You say greater power attack. You need plus six or something for that, don't you? Uh, I don't remember what the prerequisite is for improved power attack. It might just be power attack. Um, 
the problem with power attack is taking penalties at low levels is usually futile because you're already struggling to hit as it is. It's about taking it early so you can start using it later. Um, well, that's what I said about taking power attack and cleave. The only reason to take power attack is so you get cleave. If you don't take cleave, it's just a dead feat. I don't think there is an improved power attack, though. I have an improved power attack. It's based oh. on the Frenzied Berserker kit from the uh, or Prestige class from the Warrior book, I think. There's a power attack and a supreme power attack, and I made them in defeats. Where can I find that in the documents, I'm guessing? Yeah, in the uh, uh, documents channel, there's a document called PHB Feats, and it's got all of the homebrew feats in it. And any of the feats that I've... Well, all the feats from the player's handbook are in there and tweaked to my homebrew rules, plus any additional feats I've added. Did we do the loot? We did not do the loot. I was just going to say that. Um, if you guys want to sell that sword, you get 150 gold pieces back, and then you find out that the Bastard Sword is a plus one Bastard Sword. Surprise. Um, that would have a retail value of about 2,200 gold pieces. Um, the shield is a flying guardian shield. It is a plus one dancing shield. And uh, I think, actually I actually have the document open. Um, heavy steel shield plus one with the dancing ability. Once per hour, the shield may be loosed as a swift action with the command word and will fly in front of the owner for and continue to function as a shield. This effect lasts for 10 rounds at which time the shield will return to the owner's arm, also a swift action. If the shield is not grabbed immediately, it falls to the ground. Okay, as a, um, a bridge version of that, once per hour can turn into a flying shield for 10 rounds. Yeah, I just put the document in the thingy. Okay. The one from the document's actually the helm version of it. There are three or four gods that favor these types of shields, and they're the gods that uh, favor Bastard Sword as their weapon of choice. That would make a lot of sense. Being that they, Bastard Sword lends itself to being able to use, be used in multiple ways. Okay, uh, so but, after the identifies, we only have 150 gold, right? On top of all the other loot you have to sell, all the uh, axes and bows and whatnot, you can sell all of those for half their book price. That should be a fair chunk of coin. The cloak is obviously a masterwork armor weave cloak. It is plus two charisma. That's hot. Yeah, the sad thing is you guys didn't finish the adventure, so there's still more shit in the, uh, the tomb. Do we have a sorcerer? Sorry, what was that? I, uh, we do have a sorcerer? Yeah, the uh, archer is a sorcerer. Okay. Yeah, you're not getting that cloak. All the charisma devices are going to go to the uh, sorcerer. I'll get the hand. I'll, I'll probably try to get one at some point to increase the number of turns that I can get so I can have metamagic divine casting. You're like seven picks back now. There's only four people in the party, and you're in seventh row. I, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Eventually, I'll try to get something for some charisma. Even if I have to just take that later when you get something better. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. Although, I'm not sure I want to put that on over armor. Put what on armor? Well, if I, I don't know if I'd want to take that item and in place of armor is all is what i was saying which item cloak uh it's for you it's probably not better than uh that's what i was saying I, yeah. I wouldn't put it on over my armor i mean i wouldn't put it on instead of my armor is what i was saying yeah the cloak only gives you plus one ac and plus one dr which is nice for georgina um and then the plus two charisma bonus but you can just buy an armor weave cloak uh in town if you want they're expensive as hell though no i'm good i just was wanting the charisma uh, charisma eventually something for charisma eventually they'll eventually be a plus four charisma item and then you guys can fight yeah. to, fight and to the death over it. it and i won't be able to claim it i'll have to wait until i get like second hand like well i got a plus four and now i'm getting a plus six so i'll either throw this away or you can have it 
eh, we'll figure it out. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, um, Jordina, when do you want to go over your character? Uh, well, I actually only have one question besides needing help with the skills. Unless you really want to go over my character, then we could do that anytime you want. Okay, well, I figured I'd let you go so you don't get in trouble with your wife. I just meant some point during the week, just message me and let me know when you want to do it. We've got two weeks. Um, I'll let you know right now. Everyone always leaves everything to the last second, and I can only do one thing in the last second, so keep that in mind. I try not to do things at the last second. That's fair. So, yeah. Um, okay. No, my question is this. Would you... Do you allow Dragon Magazine? Well, it depends on what it is. Most of the Dragon Magazine stuff is reasonable, but some of it is just shit somebody pulled out of their ass. Like, I use lots of stuff out of the Unearthed Arcana, and none of it is canon. Like, Gestalt is out of the Unearthed Arcana. Um, I just look at things and weigh them individually. Like, Kenny is going down the parrying tree. That's out of a Dragon Magazine. It doesn't matter okay. what your source is. Bring it to me. I'll look at it. I just don't want to say yes to everything and then go, oh, shit, that's totally broken. And I hate having to take shit away from people. That seems cruel. Oh, look at this awesome ability you don't have anymore. Okay. It was just an easy way to get dex to damage for a bow through the target or uh, fighter class variant. Yeah, there's a couple of... Uh, tricks to doing that um there's a feat i forget what it's called like dead shot eye or, or something like that that gives you your dex to your damage um i think you have to be within short range but uh what we could do if you are super gung-ho about um being an archer is i have a, a marksman class kenny's played it uh his favorite character is like 22nd level as a marksman and or 21st level and uh it's basically a purely bow oriented uh class so you get base attack full base attack with a bow but then you get three quarter base attack with non bow stuff and then there's a bunch of other perks for it uh it's very ranger oriented so i can send you the link or send you the document and you can look at it and decide if you want to do that and we can just uh retool your character using the marksman instead of uh, the fighter. That works for me. Okay, I we'll will. I'll drop that in uh, Discord for you, and uh, you look at it and let me know what you want to do. And when we sit down to redo your character, we'll just start with a fresh page and go from square one. All right. All right, gentlemen, I will see you in two weeks. See ya. So, see ya. Anybody else have any questions? I can't find the document for initiative as far as what weapons give what initiative modifiers. I found uh, one on initiative, but it doesn't list all the different weapons. So. The Masterwork Weapons document has a speed factor uh, column beside the weapons. You see that? I was trying to find the document. I just found found it and I'm opening it up now. Yeah, you might want to make a folder on your desktop or whatever to put all of your documents that you use so they're easy to find. Okay, I see it. I see. Um, Joe, how often do you do your guard duty? It should be monthly, usually, isn't it? How they usually work with guard duty. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just, I wasn't, I just didn't want him to have to uh, commit to something and then not be able to do it because he had guard duty. I think they know a month out whether or not they have guard duty, what week they have guard duty the next month. In fact, I'm pretty sure it almost always falls in the same week. But I'm not, I've never been part of the guard. I was active duty when I was in the military. 
Oh, we got more ex-military guys? Yeah, I was in the Marines for five years up until uh, almost two years ago now, actually. Like half of my players are ex-military. We, uh, you're going to get a lot of murder hobos out of the military. Yeah, no, uh, Joe's definitely uh, living up to that. And Jameson was a murder hobo. And Vane was a murder hobo. Jansen's a murder hobo. Usually I, I, I do guard once a month. Oh, okay. Do you have a regular schedule for that, or does it move around? It changes every month. Okay. Oh, I guess that's wrong. When do you find out, usually? Oh, I've got it all the way through September right now. How long have you been in the guard for? Too long. That doesn't answer the question. Too long could be two weeks. 18 years. Holy crap. Holy crap. <laughs> so what rank are you in the, uh, the army then? Not as high as I'd like. Fair enough. What made you want to keep doing it for so long? I just want to retire now. I got to... Don't you have 30 years to retire in the guard? No, you just need 20. Oh, I always thought it was 30 for reserves and guard to do, to retire. What happens... No, the, longer, the longer you do it, the, the better re the retirement is. Yeah, that's, that's to be expected. That's including... That's the same in uh, active duty. I just always thought to retire in the guard that they actually had a, a they had to go to 30 but i guess i was wrong what do you get at 20 years uh, the only difference the only difference for guard is i can't collect till 65 as where active you get to collect right away oh that makes sense thanks so you get a ba uh a, a s amount of your pay when you retire in the military so uh i think it's three years they look back three years and they take the average of those last three years that you were in your pay and then they give it to you as a Paycheck every month. Yep, and free medical. Free medical, sweet in the U.S. I actually considered doing um, well, not not the VA is not sweet. I promise you that the VA is terrible, but free, free is free, even if it yeah, is yeah, it's way better than having to pay for it. Unless, like us Canadians, who just get it all for free. And the bitterness starts. The room goes quiet. No yeah, I know. There. If no, I want to go get an MRI, at least I don't got to wait two months. That That's true. It's going to cost me more money, but I don't have to wait two months. I don't have to wait two months either. I can just drive across the border and get it if I'm that desperate. <laughs> <laughs> or you can pay for it. Even in Canada, they have some places that will offer it for extra, just for money. Well, yeah, that's a little true. more expensive than if you do it across the border, though. I don't All know. All that stuff depends on where you live, uh, how many people are in line in front of you, how serious your injury is. Yeah, I know. I, I understand that part. Whether um, or not you play for the Maple Leafs. They have their own MRI machine. <laughs> well, the, when, you're, when you're rich, you just get to pay for it every time. So then you don't got to worry about waiting in any lines. No, they literally have their own MRI machine. <laughs> well, I understand that the athletes will. I'm, just, I'm talking like more like actors. What not? Okay, unless you guys have any more questions, I'm going to take off. Sweet. I don't think I have any more. Are you wanting to go over my character sheet again with me before? The oh, next yeah, segment? we definitely have to go over your character sheet at some point in the near future. When are you free? Uh, that one hurt a little bit. I'm, I'm free anytime. <laughs> okay, well, just. I can uh, make time almost anytime. anytime. Just uh, message me during the week and we'll uh, sit down and go over it. Um,. Yeah, like I said, I just didn't look at your character sheet because I didn't have time. It happened so close to the end. And there wasn't anything crucial that was a big deal. And I figured I'd let you play through a session and see how things go and then make your decision based on that. It's a lot easier to decide what is useful and what isn't when you have some experience. I will say that I've decided that going cleric was the right idea, just because it seems like healing is going to be important. It's absolutely he amazing. Healing is awesome. Because um, <laughs> I was like, as a sorcerer, I could have cast mage armor and had four more AC. Yeah, but you also had the chance of it failing, and you, you still would have wanted to be able to heal yourself, and you want to be able to do that. Yes. Being able Everyone to every spell round so just fast. wipe away five, or five to eight points of damage in the middle of a fight is a... It's pretty amazing. 
Yeah, that's a nice I, thing as a cleric. A swift action, you can just touch yourself and heal yourself for D three plus half your level. Is and it you can swift do that. For yeah, it, you do it every. You can do it every that, round. Right. I missed the swift action. That would have been nice to know. Although uh, I ran out of spells pretty quick. I was yeah, you burned before. through yours pretty quick. Well, well we were healing. You're healing them. To be fair, I put myself out in some bad situations a couple times. Like, yeah, I was I was really surprised that you guys were like completely drained before you even entered the dungeon. I was like, oh god, these guys are just getting slaughtered. Like this is a first level <laughs> adventure that I put peons up against every week, and you guys are getting slaughtered. We kept letting them flank us. That was the biggest issue. You guys had a well, and I wasn't a very optimized character. I I realize now that maybe I should have spent some more gold on armor rather than on other things. Yeah, I, like play however you enjoy. Like you, if you like to optimize, go for it. If you don't, I I'm cool with that too. Like it wasn't like you guys were punished because you didn't succeed in something. Uh, I do my best to try and balance out the encounters and make sure that it is possible to win, except and, for the bandits. Oh, the thing is, you guys won. Like we did, we did win. <laughs> that that lie. was that was incredibly fluky that you did that. Like I looked at his hit points and I was like, he's got seven hit points. He's probably willing to negotiate. Like he's not gonna want to really fight this out because he could easily die. The the chick was like, hey, I'm behind him. I don't care. I'll just stab him. But the leader was out in front and it was like, uh, yeah, that's uh. That's that sword's gonna hurt if I get hit with it again. So, so I, I know what I did was dumb, charging out right in, right at him. But I was trying to play the character like he had no idea anyone else was there, so he's just gonna go straight for the guy that was talking crap. No, and, then, that, and I thought that was great. I I had no problem with that. It's just you also. I know the other players might be like, "Wow, you're playing so dumb. You're gonna get yourself killed." You should you should always play to your character. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Game. Don't worry about what the other players think. Play the way you want to play. Have fun playing the way you want to play. I, well, I play a character whenever I whenever I play these games, whether it's a murder hobo party or a um or role play party. I always like to play the character, so I always think, what would the character do in this situation? And the way this character is, he's his, his chaotic neutral comes out most in the fact that he loves combat. So somebody's like, hey, give me all your stuff, or we'll kill you. All right, well, you're gonna have to kill me because I'm not gonna give you my stuff. No, that's totally fair. And I, I have put players in situations before where you're literally rolling the dice to find out if your life is worth more than your sword. And that's basically what you did. And you came out on top. Like I said, you you managed to finagle that just perfectly to give the party enough time to get in position and overwhelm the other guys. If you had dropped, the fight was over. Oh, I gotta send you the the money for the session. How much is it? I'll uh, do the bills after the session, and uh, what's her face? Uh, my wife will send out the uh, PayPal. Oh, the request. That's right. Yeah. That way, it keeps track of it. If we just start having it go back and forth randomly, then it I it lose track of everything. Keep track of. I understand. Figured I'd ask so you could take care of it now, but I get that you have a system that's better. Yeah, I'll get everything figured out. Uh, probably do it in the next hour or so. And uh, my wife will send out everything and we'll be good to go. How many people in this party have played with you before? Um, you and uh, Georgina are new. Kenny's played with me for over 20 years. And Joe's been playing with me since 2018, 17, something like that. A couple of years. A couple of years. 18. And going down the list, Jesse's been playing since 2016. Matt just joined like two months ago. Uh, Laura joined maybe half a year ago. I just started playing with Slevin about a half a year ago. Um, our, same with our Razadaz. Ryan's been playing with me since 2017. Um, Jonas, a couple of years. Paul, I've been playing with Paul since 2009. Uh, obviously, uh, Jay is new. Lorian's a year or so. Uh, Sparkle Pants was uh, same game with Slevin, like six months. Uh, Nate's been about a year. Uh, Lake's been just over a year. Like most of my players have been around for a while. Oh, 
often do you reach out to try to get more players? Every time I have an opening. Like, I, I run a noob game on uh, Tuesdays, and uh, I recruit players every week to play that. So they get to come out and try the game, see what they think of it. And uh, the ones that like it join other games. Um, some players just play in the noob game. They just like join dungeon crawls and uh, one-off adventures. But when I... When I, I announce it's usually it, free. And well, the won. noob the noob game is free. It's just a uh, linear one off, like one shot uh, campaign. So you can drop in and out whenever you want. Um, most of my other games are pay to play, though. Right. I was just curious about the noob one. I'm surprised that people will come in. And... I don't know. I don't like to just regular, just um, only dungeon crawls. So that's the only thing. But, so I'm surprised people enjoy that type. Of you like dungeon crawls or don't like dungeon I crawls don't. i don't oh, like it when it's just straight dungeon crawl yeah i and tend to do a mix so um i usually have a dungeon set up for the noob game and i run this adventure this is the goblin tomb adventure i've run this adventure more than 20 times um so if i have a group of new players and it's a big enough group that i think they can handle it i'll run them through the goblin tomb otherwise we'll just do a dungeon crawl just for basic mechanics Oh, I'm curious about the bandits. Um, since we searched them well, did they have any showing signs of being part of a larger bandit group? No, they were just roadside brigands. There wasn't anything about any one of them that was common. I think the closest commonality was two of them had the same uh, token ring. What are the di what's the difference between the two token rings that you send out? Uh, one was the token you I made. a golden one and a dull one, is that what I mean? Oh, the one with the flaming ring and the one without it? It's just style. Some people oh. like the stylish one. Some people like the plain one. Uh, Jordina did his own token, so... I don't care. I just make... Uh, I look at the, the art and go through my list, my... A uh, pile of token rings and just pick out one that looks good like I did uh, Kenny's token first and he's kind of like a very earthy tone so I grabbed the cow ring and used it for him and then your character suited that well uh, so I did it again and I did the same thing for Joe's character in hindsight I probably shouldn't have done that because then it makes the characters confusing from a distance to tell which one's which fair enough yeah I don't know. I was. I took me a while to finally find a character token I wanted to use. Yeah, it's not a big deal. We, if you find something you like better, just send it to me. I can make you a new token. I wish I was just, uh, good at art, and I would just draw one. But I suck at art, so I'm never gonna try. I'm not gonna try to do that. I am so terrible at art. I don't even try. Like everything I that I get, I just steal off the internet or buy. I wish I was more creative. I could come up with programming projects I could do for fun rather than sitting here wondering what, what I should do and then never doing anything. Fair enough. Okay, well, I'm going to take off. I will catch you guys next uh, session. You're good. I'm going to head out as well. Nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the game, John. No problem. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.